In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to build this dashboard in Self Analyze Cloud from start to finish. So titles, KPI boxes, bar charts, line graphs, and finally filters. And that's really all you need to get started. So without further ado, let's get going and build this dashboard. For the data, I'm going to use the 311 San Francisco service request from BigQuery. So a lot of data to get going with here, 1.2 million rows. In stories and SAC, I'm going to click on dashboard and then the optimized design experience. Just going to pick one of the templates here to get going and just get rid of all the graphs I don't need. So as I said, I've got line charts, I've got bar plots, and I have numeric point charts, which are my KPI boxes. So I'm just going to add my data here. Just go to add the data model and pick your data model in there. I've imported my BigQuery sets and now that's added to my story. Once my data is included, I can then pick a value and I can add my unique key measure, which is just essentially a count of all my rows. So I've got 1.297 rows. And a useful tip here is that you can copy this box and you can make multiple KPI boxes. Now we're going to do this again later when we've got our styling done because it's better to style first, but I just want to show you how to do this a couple of times because this is very, very useful for duplicating visualizations and really helps you cut down on design time. Next thing we want to look at now is inserting an image. So just go to plus images and then you can add an image from your computer. Just press the upload here and then choose the image you want to select. I'd recommend going 1920 by 100 pixels and what you want to create if you want to create a banner. And then how you'll put this into SAC is just add the image and then just drag this image across the screen. And it should fill in what you need it to fill in. So the key is just to design it in Canva or some other tool exactly how you want it designed. And then you can drag it in here. Now there may be a little bit of white space left and how to get rid of that is just go down to edit styling in here and then just press cover and your banner is done. To find the color the page is using, I can just go to designer on the page and then look at the background color, which is a hex code in here. So I can just pull this hex code because it isn't in my regular colors. And now I can alter my KPI box um, into that hex code for the background. So I'm going to do the styling once and then I'm going to copy that across. To update the labels, just mouse over it and you can update the text directly. It's quite easy to do, but hard to find on some graph. Now I don't want the bottom label on this graph, so I'm just going to go into show hide and just get rid of that secondary label. And then I'm just going to go into designer here and then go to styling, which is this paintbrush icon and just update my background color. So my KPI box is almost done. All I want to do now is go back into the styling and I want to take out those last two decimal places. So I'll just go to decimal places zero in here. And now this KPI box is ready to be copied over. So you just press the three dot button and then duplicate, change this KPI box to what I wanted to show. So back into designer, I want to filter this on calls that have been closed. So add filters and then we can go down to status and we just pick closed in here and press OK. And then this will just show me my closed calls. I can do the same for open. I'm going to duplicate that again. And now I've got a total calls, the issues resolved and the open issues as my KPI boxes. At any time, I can have a quick look by pressing view and see how my dashboard is firming up. That looks great. I'm going to go in now and I'm going to change the background of this bar plot and then get going on building it. So just update the background color again to our hex code. And then I can go in here into builder and start adding in my dimensions and measures. So the account I'm going to add in again is my unique key measure. I've only one measure here and then I'm going to add category in here. So you can see that there's a lot of categories in here, too many for a visualization. I'm going to start by updating the label and I'm going to call this uh, calls by category. And then in here I can sort highest to lowest. And then what I want to do is get a top end out of here. So it's very easy. I could just go into rank and I could go top end and I'm just going to pick the top 10 data points from here. And this is pretty much my chart calls by category and top 10 data points. All I've left to do now is to add in a bit of style. So into my visualization, into my style, what I want to do is just darken up these colors a bit. So I've just gone for a darker text in here. And then I'm going to make it bold just to make it stand out. And down the end, I'm going to make my decimal places into zero. Now I'm going to take this chart and duplicate it for my next bar chart. So again, copy, duplicate, add it in here, line it up, and then just change the dimension in here from category. And I'm going to change this into source. 
not much to do here because there is only five source categories and now I can get going on my line chart. So I just go in, create a time series in here and this needs a time date. So I'm just gonna use the create a date here and then I'm gonna again, gonna use the unique key measure here and I have my line chart. Just gonna change the background color as we've been doing a number of times before, just so it fits in with the background. And then I can start darkening up the points inside here and I want to change my decimal points into zero. Again, I can show and hide what I don't want. So I don't want data labels in here. And now I want to change the label on the top so I can just change this to issues raised over time. And I am just going to bold this up and have a little look at this in the view. And I'm pretty happy with that. I just now need to add in my filters. So to add the filters, we are first gonna add in a little text field in here. So that's just add text. And I'm just gonna highlight this area as the filter area. So just highlight it as filter. You can go into the designer and change whatever you want about this text. I'm just gonna bold this up and underline it in here. Now I can add my input controls. So to do that, just go to more input controls and you'll get a page filter that you just drag over here. So I'm just gonna put this under my filters and just line this up so it looks okay. And then from here, we can edit the styling and I'm just again going to change the background color to the background that I want. And then I can start on making this what I need it to be. So I'm going to choose categories. I'm going to pick all members in there and multiple selection I press OK. And this will allow me to choose categories in here. So you can see all the categories in here and now I'm going to hide what I don't want. So I don't want the subtitle. I don't want that icon and I want to improve this in here a little bit. So you have to click this a few times to change the label. I'm gonna change this to select category. And now I'm just gonna work on my font a little bit. So I go to size, gonna change this size to 14. That looks a bit better. And now another input control, and I'm gonna use this as a date input control. So I can use a time filter. I can go to current. I'm gonna to go to create a date, and you can pick what you want in here. So I'm gonna pick quarters in here. So create a date quarters, I'm going to again change the background of this and then I need to go in here and just um, change the parameters of this a little bit. So I'm just going to change this to a fixed period and the user can change this as they want it. So just quarter one 2021 to quarter one 2022. And I'm just going to line this up a little bit. Again, you have to kind of find where you can change the selection on this. And then I am going to just show you how this works. So I'm just gonna pick two categories in here. And the last thing I wanna show you is the linked analysis. So what I can do is I can turn the linked analysis on for all widgets on the page and choose this as a filter. And then I can go into abandoned vehicles and this will filter the rest of my data. If you found this video useful, smash the subscribe button and see you very soon for another SAC tutorial.